Welcome to the basic MNOVA processing tutorial. Once you've loaded your spectrum into MNOVA, the first thing you want to do is always reference it to the solvent. This helps you determine where the actual peaks are in relation to whatever deuterated solvent you used. So remember, deuterated solvents have a small component of protonated solvent, and so what we're actually re referencing to is the protonated component of the deuterated solvent. So I'm going to click on the zoom button. I'm going to zoom in on this region because I know my solvent is chloroform. So typically the NMR already automatically um, shifts the spectrum approximately to the solvent, but it's not always perfect. So you always want to go through and do it manually as well. So in this case, I know chloroform has a peak around 7.25. So once I've zoomed in on that region, I select the reference button up here which has the little ruler over it. And then it lets me hover over peaks and it'll click to it. So in this case, I'm going to select the one that's chloroform and then I will click on solvents. And if you scroll down, you can see it gives you the shifts of all the different solvents. So in this case, chloroform D 7.26. And then I say, okay. Um, this is also a good tip. If you don't actually know what this solvent shift should be, you can always pick on a red peak, go into that solvent chart and see what the list is, and then that can help you figure out where you should be referencing to. So once I did that, you'll notice the PPM range shifted very slightly. And so now I'm ready to go and I can continue processing. The first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to select where the peaks are. So I'm going to zoom in on this region. And I'm going to click the peak picker button, which is the hook. And in this case, we're going to do peak by peak. So if you want to learn the short keys, this is really helpful for speeding up your processing. Control K on a Mac. And if you click on this, now it lets you go peak by peak. So we don't want to click on the solvent peak because we don't, we know it's solvent. We'll click on all the others and you can see it now added all the peaks. There is a way to do it automatically, but I don't recommend it because MNOVA often picks too many peaks and it just confuses your processing. Next, we want to integrate the peaks. So remember, integration helps you determine the area under the curve. And in this case, in NMR spectroscopy, the area under the curve is related to the number of protons at that position. So if you click on this integration button, again, use the manual threshold. The short key for this is I, and you'll want to click from where the line straightens out and then drag and make sure it's approximately even around the peak. Then you'll continue to do that for all the other peaks. And so if you look at these peaks, you can already see that we have a ratio of approximately 1 to 1 to 2 to 1. So that tells us that the protons are likely in that ratio. Now, it could be that instead of one proton here, we actually have two. So if you hover over it until it selects and right click, you can edit the integral. And let's say I select normalized 2 and press enter, you can see it changed the ratios for all of the others. So in this case, it actually should be one proton. So I'm going to fix it back and close the integral manager. So now that I've referenced this part of the spectrum, I'm going to zoom out again with the full spectrum button, and I'm going to zoom in to the peaks around two. Again, I'm going to select the peak picker first, peak by peak. And then I'm going to select the integration, manual integration. And now if I zoom out, you can see we have a ratio of approximately 6 to 3 to 1 to 2 to 1 to 1. So I know that this is supposed to be mesotelomidazole. So typically you should have an idea of what you expect. 
So in mesotelomidazole, if we just look at the structure, we can determine how many distinct protons we expect to see. So if we look at the NHC part, there are three total protons. They're all unique, and so we expect to see three signals that each have an integration of one. If we now look at the mesotel, we see at the ortho position we have two methyl groups, and those actually are related to each other because if the whole mesotel rotates around this bond, those end up being equivalent. So from those, we expect one signal that has an integration of six. If we move to the meta position, there's one proton on each side. Again, they're related through rotation. So in total, we expect one peak that has an integration of two. And then at the para position, we have one methyl group, which has three protons. So we expect one signal that has an integration of three. So total, we expect six signals. So we can go through our spectrum, take a look. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that actually fits really well with our predictions. Now, just based on the ratios, we can figure out which is which. So this one with integration of six is our orthomethyl group. Integration of three is our paramethyl group. These ones we have more difficulty. So these ones, the one that integrates to be two is our meta aryl group. The other three all have integrations of one, so they're much trickier to distinguish. The other thing to notice on their spectrum is methyl groups typically show up around two, so that's in good agreement. And aryl groups or groups attached to more electronegative atoms are usually around seven. So let's zoom in on this region. One way to figure out if protons are next to each other is if they have coupling. So coupling means that the peaks split into two. And so you would expect both peaks of protons that are next to each other to split. And we'll talk about this more in a different tutorial. But in this case, you can see that all the peaks are nice singlet peaks. So it suggests that we actually can't figure out which of these protons that integrate to one is which. And so some ways to do this, you could do multi-D NMR, you could do COSY, which is proton-proton, you can do HMBC, HSQC, which are proton-carbon spectra, and those can help you figure out which protons are correspond to which positions on the molecule. The last thing in the spectrum, there are a couple smaller components. Um, you can integrate them to convince yourself that they're not significant. Usually you'll have a little bit of residual solvent. So there is one particularly good publication that actually references all common solvents in NMR deuterated solvents. And so the reference is given here. So anytime you have a spectrum, I highly recommend you look at this reference to make sure that you don't have additional solvent signals in your spectrum. That's it for the basic NMR processing tutorial. Thanks for listening.